Hello everybody, welcome to Vigilant Citizen. I am Josh, your host as always, and today with me I have a special guest, my good friend Jeremy. Thank you so much for joining. Let's go. Oh, oh, yeah. Thanks a lot for having me on today, Josh. <laughs> I've always enjoyed your episodes. Yeah, I'm one of my biggest Vigilant. fans right here. Probably my biggest. It's not even my wife. He's my biggest fan. Um. <laughs> Literally the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've already done the comedy episode. Now, um, what you got? This is a drink of the day for me. I've actually brought this up. Jeremy had this great idea. I said, hey, Jeremy, help me remember what this drink was. He's like, why don't you just bring the whole thing? And this will work out, because if I finish it, I can have more. There you go. It's a Glenlivet 18 uh, single malt scotch whiskey given to me by my good friend Dan, who has not been on the show. Maybe one day I'll get him on. But uh, sure smells good. It, is, uh, it tastes good, too. Yeah, yeah. What do you have over there? Well, Josh, my drink of choice today is um, a V8 Mango Splash, 25% and 75% water. Is that algae? <laughs> it kind of <laughs> looks like it. <laughs> with a little bit of uh, Himalayan rock salt to help with uh, hydration. No joke. Is that for real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Himalayan rock salt. Where do you get something like that? I ordered it from Amazon, okay. but I think you can get it at the supermarket. But what, what's the purpose of getting Himalayan rock salt? Well, um, it, 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 it increases your, the electrolytes, mm. and, and supposedly uh, with a little bit more electrolyte, it helps with hydration. And uh, so you absorb the absorb the water into your body more. Because typically, when I think of salt, it's actually like a diuretic. Like it, well, maybe not a diuretic, but it 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 makes you thirstier. Yeah, and 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 I don't know all the chemistry behind it, but I know it's it it it, it will react inside the body differently from like table salt. Okay. And that's okay. why they say go with the Himalayan. So you're not an salt. expert. <laughs> By no means. <laughs> and I apologize in advance. Uh, noise ordinance is going to be in effect a lot today because it just rained, and so that just makes the traffic even louder. And they just won't shut up. Just go home. Stay home. <laughs> so, uh, well, thanks for being on with me to see like that right there. Those are just, they're just cars, and it's just getting really loud. So, <laughs> local culture. Um, thanks for joining today. You saw two of my more recent videos and he had some thoughts on those and so thought I'd uh, bring you on and we just kind of go through them. I, I don't know exactly what his thoughts are quite yet. Uh, he told me a little bit about some of them. So one of them was for the Perception is Reality video yeah. and the other was the Has Civilization Peaked yeah, video. Yeah, those were both great. Oh, they were thanks. great. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, do you want to start with um, some of your thoughts on Perception is Reality? Because after I posted that video, Jeremy's like, he called me and he's like, Josh, I thought I thought you'd have more to say about that. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a great topic and um, a very relevant topic. Um, and um, But there was a part of me that was like, oh, Josh, you know, I thought you were going to go maybe a little deeper into it because, you know, I know we talk about a lot of these things down at a lot of different levels. And then you were kind of saying, well, this was just sort of the, the first episode, the initial episode. Yeah, it came back after about a month or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I did, I did like it. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Perception is reality, and, and I, I believe, and that might just be my perception. Um, we can, we can, we can, people I've definitely learned can look at the same thing and literally interpret it in two different ways mm -hmm. and draw two completely different conclusions. And that's kind of what people probably mean when they say something like, my truth. Yeah. Right? But I, I think a better term for that is my perception. Right, because my truth, I, I think of truth as being something more absolute than that. But sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Yeah, no, that was that was uh, kind of my, my 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 segue to kind of get started. But um, but you know, I see it all around us in our world today, and and you know, we're obviously exposed to so many new opinions and and by extension perceptions because of things like social media. You know, I I can read a story and then look at the comments below and think, wow, there they're not wrong necessarily in, in how they're interpreting this but i would never have thought to interpret this that way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um and that does add a lot of sort of social complexity into a discussion yeah yeah when i think social media i i like what you just mentioned about there have been so many times where i see a video of somebody saying have you ever done this where, where you watch a video and you're like everything they're saying is completely wrong everything's completely wrong i'm going to go down to the comments and get some validation and see if anybody else agrees with me. The The worst part is when you go down and they all disagree with you still, and you're like, so what I do is I just wave it all off. <laughs> yeah. It's like, all of, they're all wrong. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I, I have experienced that, and I do try to sit there sometimes and think, gosh, where where are these perceptions coming from? Yeah. How are they drawing these conclusions? Because in my mind, they don't seem to be sort of logical extensions of sort of a sequential analysis of facts. Mm -hmm. And yet, when I when I speak with someone who has a completely different opinion from me, and and I really listen, I'm just like, gosh, I see how they got there. And it, it, it doesn't jive with how I think, but I see how they got there. Yeah, yeah. They, they go down a similar path as you, but then they mm. reach a completely different conclusion. Yeah. It's like, how did you get there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, what's a, what's a phrase today they use? Tox, toxic masculinity. Oh. Uh, you know, and um, hey, don't let me go and tell me if I'm... No, if you're I good. Go I'm just thinking like that, that we've got two toxic masculine people right here, right now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but I mean, you know, one of one person could in, could in, could interpret someone like John Wayne. I think you mentioned mm -hmm, him mm -hmm. as, as a hero, as a, as a role model, as, as someone who protects his family, his neighborhood, his community. And um, then you get somebody else who says, "But he beats women, or, or something." Yeah. Right. Or, and and he was a what's the word? This is the word that I was thinking of in the moment, but I didn't say it out loud. But I will now for the for the sake of, of our conversation, but they might say something like, well, he was a colonizer, right? And I don't even mm -hmm. really know what that means exactly, but that's one of those slurs that just gets thrown out all the time that, well, he was just a colonizer, and it's just this broad blanket statement that basically means people of a certain skin color in some sense, I think, yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's a great example. Um, he, he, some people, someone who does not like John Wayne would say he was always carrying a gun or he was always threatening and intimidating and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I can't necessarily mm -hmm. argue with that, sure. but, but, in, but my, I might say the situation warranted it to protect innocents yeah. or people who were, who were smaller than the bad guy. But their response could be, but Jeremy, no situation ever warrants it. Yeah. 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 So it's just interesting. So, so, so that difference of perception between two people or two groups is very socially interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Know? Yep. Right on. Yeah, and so their reality is uh, very different from the one we might be actually experiencing. Yeah. 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 And yet when I think about it, I do find myself sort of falling on one side of that equation more than the other side. I, uh, you know, I see people like John, John Wayne and other people like him, and I tend to think of them as heroes. Well, and, and it does. Protectors. It does seem like the other perception that we were talking about, the one I specifically mentioned, in which they might say no situation ever warrants that. You have to have some sort of naivety underlying your perception in order to get to that conclusion, because you you'd have to be the kind of person who thinks, well, there's never any danger anywhere that would require you to carry a firearm. Yeah. You know, and so I I think that's why in my last video when I said something about. Uh, well, I'm right and they're wrong. That's kind of what I mean by that is that that a lot of times a lot of this is based on just simple naivety about just the, the harsh facts and harsh realities of the world that we live in. Yeah. The, the, the one other comment I'll make on this particular example is um, I have noticed that if you have a, a, if, if you have a, a male in our society that maybe doesn't fit into any kind of stereotype that maybe John Wayne represents, they can also dislike him for that reason. Mm -hmm. You know, they can be sort of a softer person. Yeah. And, 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 and therefore resentful um, and things like that. So then you have their inner psychology and their sense of self-identity at play, which I guess would be a part of perception. That's what I was going to say is you mentioned resentment. Do you think there's some jealousy? Yeah. in there and then yeah yeah but they're probably not willing to admit that in a lot of cases yeah right on i'm not jealous of of john wayne i just think he's a toxic masculine role model yeah yeah yeah, yeah you're right the the you know whatever's causing them to dislike john wayne would call would also result in them denying mm -hmm. the truth of why they dislike why him. they dislike <laughs> him yeah yeah because they actually maybe in some sense they actually want to be like him yeah yeah, yeah right on yeah. interesting <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I see you got some other notes there on perception as reality. Yeah, one of the things about um, truth, um, I, I, I have, I, I've always believed in my life there, that there is an ultimate truth, a mm. core truth mm -hmm. and reality, and that, that uh, how we perceive it is layered on top of it. But I find myself as I'm, I don't know, I, maybe getting older is the right word, phrase, I'm, I'm beginning to doubt whether there is an absolute truth the way I've been thinking about mm. it. Mm -hmm. 
over my over the years. Okay. Well, what's I guess <laughs> could you sum up in a few phrases or words that absolute truth, which that's probably a huge ask. Um, and then beyond that, could you explain a little bit about what has caused you to, to in some sense, doubt it? Yeah, I am um, the, uh, the like. There's the, the, what like the concept concept of transduction. Um, it's frequently used as a psychological term, which I know is a very interpretive science. Um, but I actually think transduction is an interesting concept. You know, when these cars go by, are they making a sound? Or are they vibrating the atmosphere, which vibrates my inner ear and cochlea, which causes a chemical and then a, an electrical in, impulse into my brain, and I experience the sound. So it's not necessarily inherent to the vibration of the atmosphere, mm -hmm. the sound itself, as much as it is as my inner working triggering that experience in my brain so when you so when you say transduction sorry just do you have a definition for that or can you specify what that word refers to is that is that what it refers to the, yeah the I, I would probably have to re refer people to the for the exact definition to the <laughs> visit to dictionary .com. To dictionary com. <laughs> but the way I remember it being discussed is literally the way our brain interprets, interprets okay and, and how we're experiencing, like one person might say it's cold, other person might say, well, it's cool. Right. And um, one person's bothered by it and then another person is not. Well, and this is where something like the scientific method comes in, which was brought about by Western civilizations and Western societies and was an attempt to, God, do you hear that? It's beautiful. I know, it's peaceful. They're all gone. Here comes one. Um, <laughs> right on time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right when we're enjoying it. Um, but that's that's what the whole concept of the uh, scientific method was to make it completely objective. So it didn't matter who was observing it; they came to the same conclusion yeah. and, and stripped away those perceptions and stripped away um, any sort of faulty thought process that processes they may have had to actually get to the truth. And it feels like that is another of these concepts that it's under assault today. Yeah. And now that's why people say things like my truth, my truth, his truth, her truth. No, I think that you're onto something there. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah, there is a there is a there is a, a scientific method, a raw process, which is designed to get um, subjectivity out mm -hmm. and universal agreement on an objective analysis in. Mm -hmm. And you're right, I would say that that, that that is under assault today a little bit. Yeah, and now that we have a lot of people in, in society, culture, civilization who are trying to turn back to subjectivity, things are no longer, it's not about a, coming to an agreement or finding the truth behind something so that we can all move forward. Now it becomes about, well, this is the way I see it, this is the way I see it, this is the way I see it. Now who can get the most power to implement their vision of, of reality and I yeah, think that's right a lot of what we're uh, seeing today is is it's a power struggle instead of a, a struggle for truth I think that the, I think the, the, the one thing that I, I, I really is always on the right hand side of my equal sign when I think about perception truth etc is I've, I've really come to, 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 to accept that other people really do have a different opinion and, and it used to be that I had a hard time if someone's opinion just seemed so wrong or so alien to me. And I was like, Who, what planet did this guy just come from? <laughs> but, but now I realize that they really are probably looking at the same thing and trying to do their best to figure it out mm -hmm. the, way, the way we all are. But they've, they've drawn something different from me. So I guess I need to spend some time trying to figure out where they're coming from. Yeah, yeah. They come, like I said a moment ago, they just come, they go down a similar path, but then they just come to a completely different conclusion. Yeah, right on. Yeah. And how strongly do you feel about that concept of the tree falling in the forest? Does it make a sound or not, Jeremy? Josh, <laughs> I got to be honest with you. When that tree falls in the forest, it does not make a sound. <laughs> It vibrates the air, <laughs> and until it's transduced in our brain and we experience it as a sound, it's just a vibration pattern in the atmosphere. But Jeremy, what if I put a sound, like a tape recorder out in the forest and hit record, walk away, and then the tree falls? Well, you know, emulating the sound and re-vibrating the atmosphere in your proximity will, um, will, 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 will will vibrate your inner ear and cochlea, <laughs> cause the chemical, the electrical, and therefore the transduced sound experience in your brain. So, 
So this time it's coming from a recording device rather than the tree. The tree right. the, the, you're saying that the, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like you're saying that the recording device cannot transduce and therefore it, the tree is not making a sound until we have transductified it. <laughs> yeah. So, so when the tree hits the ground and it creates a vibration pattern, we have uh, recording devices that can replicate that. And the we reason why we call it replication is because it will just vibrate the air in our proximity yeah and um and then just make us experience that sound <laughs> yeah so so the reason i'm laughing about this is because this has been i wouldn't say contentious isn't the right word but this has been a, a sticking point for jeremy i've known him for well it's been over 10 years now like 15 years and whenever this comes up he's like no no this is this he's very gentle about it this is the way it is though um the argument that i've made in the past is that we may just have different definitions of what a sound is so it's you have to agree on what is a sound before you can get to the conclusion that you've come to. Because some people might think that when you're saying sound, it is those vibration particles. But you're saying the sound, when we say sound, it's a definition of how did you interpret it right. in your brain. Because somebody might say vibrations are sounds. Right. right. And so, so sometimes you can get definitions in there and it can become a trick question if you're not careful, I think. Yeah. So. And I can see why, you know, you know, ever since you're born, we make the association that when that vibration pattern hits my ear, I experience a sound. And so I can see how someone could say, hey, the, the vibration pattern itself is carrying a sound. I can see how that association can get made. Yeah. So master chemist and master <laughs> physicist <laughs> and psychologist. <laughs> you got an opinion on everything, Josh. <laughs> Uh, um, what other thoughts did you have, or was there any more about transduction or, or about perception as reality that you wanted to dig into? Um, I can't think of anything else at the moment. Let me, um, <laughs> let me just check my <laughs> let notes Let me refer here. to my notes. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the, you, you, can, you can have an object like the, the, the pieces of wood that make this table, and, 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 and some scientists will say they have primary and secondary qualities. The, the mass of the wood um, generally does not change. That's so loud. Within the framework of science and the universe as we, as we, as we live in. But the, but the color that I see here is a secondary characteristic because I could take the same piece of wood to Jupiter and look at it and it would not appear to be this color. And so we might say this table is gray, but my friend on Jupiter might say absolutely not, it's blue. Mm -hmm. And so, so primary, secondary qualities, characteristics, but all related to perception and what one could argue is truth. Yeah, and a moment ago before the video, before we started the video, you mentioned something about what you interpret as blue, I might see as, as your version of yellow or something like that. Yeah. I, I did just have a thought while you were talking about it just now though, is that <coughs> you mentioned mass, weight, those kind of things which can be objectively measured but I, we can objectively measure color too, right? Based on reflective qualities, reflective qualities, or or the uh, the rays that are being, I forget exactly the wavelengths, the wavelengths that that yeah. get bounced back, and so you can actually definitively say that this is a color, but that still doesn't rule out how we perceive it. My brain might interpret blue the same way your brain interprets my version of yellow. Yeah. 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 yeah so Which, it truly would vary. Yeah, because <clears throat> I could say that's bright. Um, I mean, I'm freaking colorblind over here, and so uh, this is uh, a really good... If you... Uh, I should show you this video on um, my other channel where I'm playing some video games or board games and stuff. There's one where I played an old school video game that had a, uh, a color puzzle, oh, yeah. and Tori wasn't home to help me with it. I was stuck on it for, <laughs> for way too long. I was like, is that purple? I can't tell if that's purple. Maybe that's blue. I don't know. Is that orange? Yeah. Is that green? I don't know what. So, no, this concept of transduction is pretty interesting, and I think it's... Uh, I think it's really important when we're thinking about perception and how it it manifests reality or or how it relates to reality because yeah. uh um in the previous video i mentioned you know like somebody who has schizophrenia um that because we can all if we don't have a mental illness as strong as that one because <laughs> we all are mentally ill in some sense right um <laughs> that was the implication <laughs> i think that i accidentally made but we can all still operate in reality to some extent even if we're perceiving it to off a little bit from what it really is yeah. but some people are perceiving it too far off that that's when they need to get extra help and maybe some meds or or, yeah. or go to a well that we don't have mental institutions anymore but something like that 
And interestingly, probably if you had a battery of doctors in, uh, um, examine someone who had schizophrenia all independent of each other, they might all conclude that this person has schizophrenia, but they may not conclude that they have the same, that he has the same degree of sure. schizophrenia. Yeah. Because they're looking at his schizophrenia through their filters, which are are built around the experiences of, the, of their own life. Yeah, you can't dissect somebody's brain to get a sense of how much schizophrenia is in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, at least, I mean, you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but there, there's an argument to be made against it, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I think that uh, I, I think that I would I would also, I, I would have to reference the, the recent pandemic. Um, the uh, you can have two people who are functional in society. They have great jobs. They ha they have successful families and relationships. And 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 one person might be like, um, I cannot leave my house. If I leave my house, I will die based mm -hmm. on my interpretation of the, the data around me. Mm -hmm. And the other person could be on the other end of the spectrum and saying nothing is going to happen mm -hmm. you know and um and and those are both functional human beings uh, they would probably be both be labeled the same but they've just got different um perspectives of reality mm -hmm. yeah and they're probably drawing upon their own personal experiences too which is completely different from each other like i mentioned in the previous uh episode you get somebody from minnesota and somebody from arizona and they're going to have two wildly different experiences so one who is sickly might be more terrified of a of a COVID-19 pandemic whereas somebody who rarely ever gets sick is just going to go outside and be like no I, I, everything's perfectly fine who cares if I get it I'll beat it I'll yeah. beat this too yeah. yeah 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 right on yeah well cheers man <laughs> are you thirsty there's a lot of talking <laughs> ah. I try to drink two of these a day <laughs> what are the health benefits well, I, 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 I think that I think that I don't always feel thirsty, mm. and uh, I can sometimes get a headache or feel a little tired. And and Tara, my girlfriend, might just say, "Just drink two bottles of water, Jeremy. You, you get dehydrated." And boom, she's right. <laughs> so, but this also makes you feel better, like mentally. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I, I feel I feel physically better because I don't have that headache. <laughs> And by extension, you know, my brain is working more optimally. I, I meant that it was more of like a, uh, um, when you have a control group with a, what is that kind of, I'm spacing on the word. Oh, like a placebo? Thank you, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just kind of a placebo. Hey, it might be. But you know what? I'm with you. I try to do two of these a day, too. <laughs> I try to do two of one, these. One at breakfast and one at lunch. No. Yeah, right on. I got to say, it does smell good. Yeah. It, it really does. Do you want to sip? I think I'm okay right now. Maybe right. after the show, but okay. but uh, but it sure does smell good. It seems like a good brand. <laughs> it is. Well, it's 18 years. It, it better be good. It's really smooth. Yeah. So, and it's uh it's pretty strong too. You know, I always enjoy reading the back. They always have a description, but I always do it in like a Scottish accent. Uh, As uh, people go, George Smith was no ordinary man. You know, like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, uh, anything else on perception, reality, transduction? No, but I, I think that probably when I reflect on this conversation and, and spend a little time looking at our video tonight or tomorrow, I probably will think of some other things. And if I do, I'll be happy to share them with you. Yeah. In the comments below. Yeah. Via email. Wherever. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you have thoughts on the other video I did? I know that we've talked a little bit about it outside of it, but um, has civilization peaked? Did you want to bring any of that up? That was a, that was a great video. And, and this is not just the recency effect. Um, I, I enjoyed that one, I think, the most. Um, they're all great, but that one, that one kind of triggered something in my, in my thought process that the other ones uh, hadn't had a chance to yet. And um, I, I, I don't know that I think that our, our society has peaked, because sometimes a graph might do this while it's still going up. Sure. But we sure. have hit something. Yeah. We have hit some kind of milestone right now. And I think that your five points about space exploration, heroes, inventions, etc., mm -hmm. were very, very insightful barometers of society. Yeah. I thought those were really good points. Do you think I missed any, or like I asked in the, at the end of the, the video, do you think that I missed anything that were barometers otherwise? Um, 
I thought about that afterwards. I, 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 I don't necessarily think so. I, I probably a few little things I can think of here and there, but they could ultimately probably fold in under um, the five that you presented. I thought the one about heroes was particularly interesting um, because if you want to have a hero, you have to have a society that commonly says, hey, that person's a hero. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that you even referenced John Wayne. I did, yeah. And um, so you can have people people love him and, and people hate him based on the way our society has become somewhat partitioned. Yeah. Yeah, because maybe back in the day when he was still alive and was still big in Hollywood, there was probably still some people who didn't like him, but he was enough of an influence that the majority of people saw him as, you know, maybe not a hero in real life. I think he served in World War One or Two, if I remember correctly, but at the very least, just a Hollywood hero. He's a, yeah. he's a role model that we can look up to. Uh, the The things that he does on screen may not be real, but we can we can learn something from them, and we can learn something just by the way he's behaving on screen and I can apply that to my own life. Yeah. Um, I don't feel that we have anything like that in Hollywood at all. No, <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> you know, John Wayne may have said, I, someone may have said, listen, I don't like war. I don't like violence. But John Wayne is saying that we have to all register for the draft as part of our civic duty and our sense of community and I think that most people would have agreed with that mm -hmm. you know some of them might say I don't like this violence I don't want war I don't want this I don't want that but I agree we all need to register for the draft yeah and and I think that that was something that was very powerful a good social message yeah yeah back yeah it feels like uh, Hollywood actors especially big names have always had some influence but it feels like in the past that they were moving towards something greater than themselves and a lot of Hollywood actors today are telling people no just focus on yourself and make make yourself happy and, and do that and don't worry about the greater cause and effect just just do whatever it takes to make you happy and that's that yeah. that's what I do yeah that's so interesting I was actually thinking about that point literally today oh yeah yeah this whole thing about um, like if I, I I like Facebook, I like I like going to reels, I <laughs> I know, <laughs> but it does help me sort of see what's going on in the world outside of my world, and I see a lot of reels focusing on, you can't love anybody until you love yourself, you can't do things for others until you've taken care of yourself, and and I think that there you know there's some truth to that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I would also say that that's an extension or an ingredient in a society that's teaching people to be selfish. I haven't yeah. quite got that reconciled yet, no, but I, there's I, something in there. No, I, I completely agree. I see where you're coming with that. Because I think it is important to, to understand your self-worth and your self-value. As a human being, you have some, <laughs> some inherent value, but you have to bring it out into the world. Yeah. And until you've done that, you're, you're not that valuable of a person. We, we could argue that what we're doing right now and, and trying to sort through the truth is, is valuable because we're going to put this message out to other people, right? There's an argument sure. to be made for that. Um, but I think somebody who's just completely depressed and just staying at home and doing nothing, there's, there's, not, there's inherent value, but it, it's like, um, what is that in physics where there's potential energy and then kinetic energy? Yeah. They, they, they've got the potential energy, but they're not using it. They're not kinetic. And so... You know, I really love that metaphor. We're going to have to use it from here on out in yeah. our conversations. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but so before they can go out and become kinetic, they do need to understand that they, they can be valuable. They can sure. go out and, and make something different. So I, I see what you're saying. There's something about that message which is good, but you can't allow it to paralyze you and think that you shouldn't go out and do anything. Right. That's a really interesting point. Yeah, because if someone's stuck at home being depressed and miserable and suicidal, I don't think I'm going to say, man, I love you for, for what you are, for who you are. Yeah. What I, what I, what I, I like the idea that what you just said about the potential energy, because I would say, listen, you need to start thinking about all that you can be. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, um, and also, you know, based on some of the discussions that you and I have had and your references to Jordan Peterson, who I think is a fascinating guy, mm -hmm. Um, help them with specific actionable things, you know, get up tomorrow morning, make your bed, take yeah. a shower, yeah. uh, have a good breakfast, take room. a walk. <laughs> 
and um, and give me a call. You know, we'll go grab breakfast together. Yeah. And it'll be a fresh new day. Yeah, and there was uh, something my wife said to me the other day was she loves me unconditionally, and I think she said that. And I said, no, you don't, and that's okay, and you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, what if I tried to kill you one day? You know, and she's like, well. Uh, I, I mean, well, and she kind of stumbled. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, you, you love me conditionally, and you should. And, and I should love you conditionally because, I, I mean, if, if you're an axe murderer <laughs> and you're trying to kill me, I, I think I'm going to rescind my love. I'm sorry, issues. but that's, I've you know, that, yeah. that's, a, that's a deal breaker. <laughs> 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 yeah. and, you know, it's different. That line is different for everybody. So, um, but I, I don't think she had really considered that. And I think a lot of people are given that message today that you should just love somebody unconditionally and it's no that's the only person who might love you unconditionally no matter what here on this earth is your mother that, yeah. that's the only person i can think of who might because i know fathers won't <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah, that's a good point there's a connection there with 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 from mom which is unique yeah but there's a lot of mothers yeah who will still love their child even after they've committed murder and will still go visit them in prison yeah. and stuff like yeah. that so yeah do you mind if we take a right turn? I know we wanted to talk a little yeah. bit about civilization peaking or not, but I think this is kind of intertwined in it. And we, you mentioned social media, and yeah. I had a reaction. <laughs> but let's let's dig into that a little bit because I really look up to you, and I think you're a smart person. And, and for those of you watching, Jeremy's in some sense my mentor. He <laughs> has been in in uh, my profession uh, longer than I have, so I'm able to bounce a lot of ideas off of him uh, a lot of times. So, but. You're you're on social media, yeah, and I don't think it's had a negative effect on you the way it had on me. And that's one of my main messages on on this channel is get rid of all your social media, don't use it. It's the devil's playground. Yeah. It will make you a worse person. You will be unhappy. Uh, get rid of it, and your life will instantly improve. But you seem to have not been affected by that by it in the way that I've described. So, so what what do you think is the difference there? I think um, that's a great question, Josh, and I'm sure there are a lot of reasons, but I think that the reason why I have stayed on Facebook is when Facebook first came out, this was something completely foreign to me. I had never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. um, before, if I wanted to stay in touch with my friends in Africa or in Europe, I had to write them a letter. Or, 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 or do a 25 cent per minute phone call. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden Facebook came along and I could stay in touch with people. Um, it, it did in my mind go through a period where it was kind of weird and toxic and society was trying to figure out how to use it. But having been on there for I think 15 years now or whatever it is, I have become pretty comfortable knowing when, you know, this is probably not a person I should, you know, listen to on a regular basis. Um, and so they're not, we're not going to be friends. I'm not, I don't hate them, but we're just, we can't be friends here. Yeah. And, but if um, you run into them in the grocery store, you'll, yeah. you'll hey, how's it going? Yeah, let's go camping how's, this how's weekend. How's your life doing? Yeah. 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 How did the driveway sealer work out for you last <laughs> summer? But, um, but, 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 but I, I think that for me, I have figured out how Facebook works for me. Um, I like sharing positive things like I might do in a letter or in a card. I don't consider it a platform with which to pontificate or mm -hmm. express my opinion, but I've also grown to be more patient with the opinions of others, and, um, but I just keep my, friend, my, my friends list fairly short. Sure. Yeah, and I think that's the difference. I think the majority of people use it to collect as many friends as possible, yeah. and in some sense that's a status symbol. Um, but you also mentioned you don't use it to, to pontificate. Yeah. I feel like that might be antithetical to the purpose of Facebook these days, and so you might be actually using it against its intended purpose. Do, do you have any thoughts on that? That's an interesting point. I, I, I would say if, um, if there's an advertiser out there, they probably aren't, I would think, they're probably not too concerned about my opinion of, of the, the federal government as much as they are, is he going to see my advertisement and possibly purchase the products I'm promoting? And so I, I, I understand what you're saying about the antithetical piece. And I don't know if this is true for all of Facebook, but for me right now, um, I'm still fine looking at their ads. And if I do a search for a gas fire pit and all of a sudden I see ads on Facebook for a gas fire pit, I, I, I don't, for me, I don't see that as a big problem. Yeah. Um, it's actually kind of convenient. I really was looking for a gas fire pit. Yeah. I think what's creepy for me is when you and I are talking about 
purchasing a gas fire pit and then you get ads on your phone later <laughs> saying <laughs> Jeremy would you like to buy a gas fire pit and like your Google your Gmail or anything like that and I realize what I'm doing right now is that I'm I'm preventing myself from ever getting a job at Facebook but you know that's okay because I don't think their values line up with mine and I don't think I'd ever want to work there and I'm not denigrating them by saying that I just don't think that um well, it sounds like it's a challenging place to work anyway and you know I don't think I meet all the qualifications let's just put it out that way that's just yeah. it that. <laughs> I, I mean if I started getting if I if you and I are talking about gas fire pits and then I get a, a, a an advertisement for a gas fire kit <laughs> because they didn't quite hear me properly. It didn't transduce it correctly. <laughs> then I would be like, huh, there may be more going on here than I'm, than I'm thinking. <laughs> do you think, and, and I hope you don't mind me bringing this up, but do you think there might be a difference in our age because you grew up in a time that was a lot less, you, 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 you had a lot less of these opportunities for communication. Yeah. Whereas I, I mean, I grew up and I didn't have as many either, but by the time I was about, I don't know, 16, 17, <coughs> the internet was starting to really explode. And so um, I had a different experience with, you were more mature when the internet came out, when Facebook came out, when social sure. media came out. Whereas yeah. I, was, I wasn't even in my 20s yet. I think, that's a, I think that's a very, very fair point. And Josh, you can always bring up um, our age differences <laughs> and our generational differences. I think that's very relevant on a lot of things we talk about. Mesozoic Cretaceous. That's yeah. no. <laughs> I mean, and, and it's true. I mean, a lot of my friends are talking about their, their, their vegetable gardens. And they're talking about their, their trips, on the, their day on the beach. And they had a bologna sandwich and stuff like that. So <laughs> it's very benign stuff, which could be more reflective of my generation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that didn't have sort of their, their, they didn't have that many fires in the iron. Um, irons or irons in the fire. In the fire. Yeah. And um, <laughs> whereas you, when, when, when you kind of came of age with social media, you know, it was already there. Um, and and there, there may have been some sort of pressure on you socially mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. more involved. And there's all these confusing um, uh, data, data vectors and opinion vectors. Yeah, which my generation just didn't have. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, that may have allowed you to, to ease into it a little bit better, whereas I was on a college campus when it was coming out, and when, yeah. it, when it came out, it was only for college students, and that's when I ended up joining it. Um, we're talking about Facebook specifically, but I remember when Twitter came out, which was like 2009, 2010, and um, I was going back to school a second time, and, and they were talking about it in one of my classes, and I actually pulled it up and kind of tried it out in the class because I had my laptop with me. Um, and so, yeah, I think it might have been different, completely different on a college campus, yeah. you know, because yeah. people were starting to, like, poke each other. <laughs> you know, that virtual poke that I don't yeah. think exists anymore, but, yeah. Well, yeah, and also I think that um, when you are exposed to social media at a, at a younger age, it becomes a de facto method to cultivate meaningful relationships. Yeah. So if I'm, a, if, if I'm 17, True. now I have another vector to sort of meet girls. Or, or, or yeah. things like that. Yeah. Whereas when I was 17, you, you, you had to meet him in person mm -hmm. and, and you had to like talk and... <laughs> <laughs> you had to know how to dance too, yeah. right? It, yeah. it, it wasn't yeah. just some sort of funny little quip that I threw their way yeah. uh, for 10 seconds. And so that social dynamic, I think is very important. It all sounds better. It all sounds so much better. <laughs> yeah. On the one hand, I, I would love to be 17 again, knowing what I know now. And, 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 and meeting more people um, on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. <laughs> well, but, know, I, but I think when you're coming of age, it's complicated. Yeah. I think if I were to go back, I would deliberately not join any of them because that would actually make me more mysterious to a lot of people, you know, hey. especially women. There so, you go. You know, the strategies. You know what's interesting about our conversation right now is we're actually living out the concept of perception being reality because you have a very <laughs> different idea and very different perception of social media. Yeah. You, 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 you don't. You maybe don't embrace it with wide open arms, but you have it in your life. But you've kind of kept it at bay, like at arm's length, maybe. Whereas I'm of the mindset now, where I've had enough negative experience with it, where I'm just like, no, set up, set it all on fire. Yeah. <laughs> just burn yeah. it all. <laughs> and going back to your 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 question about age differences, I'm much more comfortable at my age. I'm 60, just so you know, folks. 
Um, I'm 60 much, years younger. Yeah, I'm much more comfortable at my age just unfriending someone, saying, hey, listen, and I, and I don't do it anonymously, and I do ping them and say, hey, listen, man, I don't, I'm not comfortable with the way you choose to, to portray yourself publicly. Whereas before, 25, 30 years ago, I was, I've tried to sort of worm my way and wangle my way, and that person nowadays is also more comfortable hearing me say that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yep. So that does make a difference. Yeah. No, that's true. I think about when I was, if I was like 20 and I tried to do something like that. Yeah. I would have been doing the finagling. Yeah. The trying to figure it out. The, the, how do I do this without coming off as a jerk or whatever? But, but no, I mean, a lot of it just comes down to just be confident in your decision. Make yeah. sure you're making the right decision for yourself and then just own it and go for it. And you know, they, they, they can choose how to react however they want. Yeah. But it's harder when you're younger because you want everybody to like you. Yeah, I mean, so. if, if I if I unfriended someone and they were to say to me, "You really hurt my feelings," I'd be like, "Oh, come on, knock it off! <laughs> You're still Grow coming up. over on Friday for dinner, right?" <laughs> you know, it, we're it, having it, jambalaya. Yeah, it's, it, 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 that social dynamic is a reflection of just being 30 years older. Yeah, and I've yeah. I've done stuff like this where we've this channel things like this kind of since I don't know since I was 15, whether it was like an online blog or something like that, and even then I would try to morph what I was talking about so that, that people would like me or, or wouldn't dislike me because sure. of my opinions or whatever. But nowadays I'm like, no, this is this is it. And you know, take it or leave it. I was telling you earlier that, that I got a dislike on some videos. It's like the first couple of dislikes I've gotten. I've now instead of that bothering me and I, I see it as kind of a milestone. You know, it's actually right. reaching people <laughs> who don't like me. Yeah. You know, I've gotten some hate <clears throat> mail and I've gotten some dislikes. That's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that <laughs> is. people think about things. That is very interesting, yeah. <laughs> Whereas, yeah, rewind 20 years ago and I'd be like, oh my God, what did I say? <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, well, I, want, I want to reach out to you. Yeah. I want to, I want to get this let's, fixed. Let's figure this out. And now I'm like, you dislike everything. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, and this person, <clears throat> if, if, even if you were to talk with them, you'd probably think, gosh, they, they do have an interesting point. I don't agree with it. Yeah. But I now see that they do have a point. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and I'm right in their rock. No, I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tough to be them. <clears throat> but yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that does all make a difference. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Oh, I did that and the dogs went nuts. <laughs> go, go, do whatever you want. Yeah. It's just nice when there's, man, the rain really makes it get loud. Yeah, so. it does. Yeah. I will also say that I've noticed that Facebook does seem to be for older people now. Um, I, I, you know, I, not, I, I, like my nieces and nephews, they have accounts, but they're hardly ever actually on yeah, it. Yeah, they're on like, what, Instagram, TikTok? I hear about Twitter, TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. I think Twitter's probably... Are you on Twitter? No, Facebook is the only thing I'm okay. on. Yeah. yeah. I, I wonder if you'd have a different opinion about social media if you were on Twitter. Obviously, it's a different kind of platform with different goals and different interactions and things like that, but um, it sounds like that one is... If, if, if you were to, to, to take cancer and put it in something virtual, Yeah, that would be it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've definitely seen news stories about, what do they call them, like challenges? Social, like there's, there's things with, like social challenges. Like the ice bucket challenge? Yeah, from, yeah, exactly. I'm only 10 years late to it. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've heard that these you know challenges are concerning to a lot of people because you know, you know kids are getting killed now. Oh, like the Tide Pod stuff. Yeah. Remember the Tide Pods? Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, or, or you can have st unusual influences like this girl um, does a show and she's always pretending to have like a tick. Oh, yes. And so, so a bunch social of other contagion. people. Social contagion. Social what contagion. What a great phrase. Yeah. And I didn't come up with it, just to be clear. Yeah. 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 So I, I do find those phenomenon quite interesting. Yeah. And, um, and I think to myself, well, is it, just a, is it just a modern day variation of a phase and they'll outgrow of it? Or is it truly taking them into a, a, a different direction of social development? Right. You yeah. Know? No, I completely agree. What? I wonder what the world would be like today if there had never been any social media. That's a great question. You know, how different would it be? I bet it would be a lot. It's hard to say. Would it be a lot different? I think. I think it would be somewhat different because I've noticed that me being off social media for something like four years now, I, I lose track of what the trends are. But I also don't care. <laughs> yeah. I actually enjoy not knowing what they are. People will talk about something and they'll be like, Josh, haven't you heard about this, this, this? And I'll be like, no, you were just talking about something different two months ago. So yeah. what was the point of keeping up with that one? Yeah. <laughs> but it's all over TikTok. Ooh, okay. <laughs> well, you know, another thing which is interesting is, you know, I, I think many of us are, are, are on LinkedIn. 
Yeah. And Josh, like you mentioned, we're in the yeah. same industry. I am on that one. Yeah. And, and, and I've noticed that LinkedIn has become a form of social media. Mm-hmm. But I've also learned that LinkedIn, in, in many ways, has replaced what used to be called sort of the good old boys network, in my opinion, a little bit. I see, when I, when I log in, I see all kinds of activities going on and discussions growing, going on between the senior and executive people I work with, middle mm-hmm. management, mm-hmm. Uh, line workers, and I'm just like, gosh, I, I, I didn't know this was all going on. Yeah. So I, I monitor it a little more. Yeah, I do check LinkedIn a little bit more often just to see what people are talking about because it, it is about industrial stuff or industry stuff. And I apologize now because the sprinklers came on. I was worried about this one because it just, it was like sputtering. Oh, yeah. And I was worried that maybe there wasn't enough pressure so it was not going to get the rest going. But that looks beautiful. And it won't spray so. here. No, no, okay. it'll, it'll, it'll hit the side here a little bit. Okay. But Jarvis will position him, himself perfectly. So it doesn't touch him. Good old Jarvis. So he's got us <laughs> covered. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I LinkedIn is the one that I still have. I still do have an Instagram account. I barely use it. Um, but LinkedIn, and also if I'm hiring, I can use LinkedIn to try to, you know, help expand recruiting a little bit to some extent. Yeah. So, yeah. The other, I only use it for work. So. The, other, the other thing, too, I find interesting is the... Um, um, Twitter in particular, uh, for my example, has really revolutionized how we hear things from, you know, movie stars, politicians, um, you know, uh, from around the world. You know, I I found it very interesting, you know, three or four years ago when we had a president who put Twitter comments out there. I was like, that's interesting. It's different. Yeah. And um, that has changed the way people communicate and the way people expect to hear information. Yeah. In a way, when Twitter first came out, since it constrained you to, what, 70 characters when it first came out, yeah. it was almost like a game. Can you communicate and get your thoughts out there concisely yeah. so that other people can understand it with only 70 characters? Kind of an interesting idea. Yeah. Um, but, I, but I think it, it, instead of being an interesting game like chess, you could put all the... Co- put a bunch of queens on chess and say you can move wherever, but that's not a fun game. That's yeah. just chaos on a board. But if you yeah. constrain it artificially and make a chess board with a chess game with pieces c- that can only do certain things, now you've got an interesting game. And I feel like that's what they were trying to do with Twitter yeah. in some sense. Let's constrain it and see what people do with it. But I think it it accidentally made society or tried to make society less intelligent. <laughs> yeah, and, it, uh, and, and I think it also did feed into this whole thing about instant gratification. Yeah, yeah. Uh, brief communication, because I don't want to listen to you for more than three seconds without understanding your point. Yeah, and, um, that's a good point. It's very but yeah, you're right. If everything is boiled down to uh, you know, letters for words and LOL and things like that, which <laughs> I think is kind of cute in a way. I mean, I do it. But, 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 but but for for people who are are really at, at the age where they're learning the language, they're learning yeah. grammar and stuff like that, it could be another source of confusion. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right on. Yeah, very good stuff. Um, well, I, I took us on a tangent there with social media. Did did you have anything else about either social media or civilization peaking or not that that you wanted to dive into, or anything else at all? Since we're we're here. Sure. And it's a lovely day. <laughs> yeah, I, I just—I guess I, I do want to just say again, I really enjoyed that last uh, video, and 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 in and in, 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 in an unusual kind of way, I'm actually kind of glad to hear you got one thumbs down, because yeah. that means your your audience is broadening, and um, the opinions of those watching and listening are more diverse. Mm-hmm. Which I like what you said last time. That's kind of a, a funny word the way we use it today. But I think that that just adds to more interesting conversations and topics. Mm-hmm. But I but I have to say that I did agree with your last video. Yeah. I thought those five bullet points were very insightful. Yeah. That 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 it does seem like we've peaked and we're on. Like you said, like that was a good way of phrasing it and 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 using some gesture to to show it. But yeah. we're on some sort of downward trend right now. It might not be permanent. You know, the fall of Rome wasn't permanent, but it took a thousand years to get out of it. Yeah. Right? So that was my question at the end of it. Okay, it does seem like we're down, but what the question now will be, how long of a downslope is that? When will we yeah. When will we get out of that valley? Yeah. No, that's, so, a, that's a great question. Yeah. And that whole, I think, I think that you and I had talked about the metaphor of the wave coming to the beach. It's like, you know, you can be on top of a wave without being aware that this whole thing is about to fold 
to fold over and oh, just yeah. create just chaos. Yeah. But at the yeah. moment, everything looks You're all right. You're on top of the world, yeah. baby. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think it'll take. Um, I think it'll take strong leaders, uh, fair-minded people, to help us get through back onto an upward trend. And to be honest with you, what's popping into my mind at the moment is when um, Edward Shevard Nazi, who I think was the Secretary of State or the equivalent for uh, Russia or the USSR in the late early 90s, when Gorbachev and, and Raisa were taken hostage by some terrorists, I remember seeing this man in this beautiful Italian suit out on the front steps of the Kremlin with a machine gun. Oh. And, and it was Edward Shevard Nazi, and I was and and I was and I read his book after that, and I can remember thinking, men of good character, men of good will, men of good meaning, they have to know when it's time to flip over the milk crate and stand up and lead. Yeah, yeah, they have to know when it's time to become unreasonable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or when things have become so unreasonable, yeah, you got the, you got to meet it head on. Yeah, yeah, there's no way out but through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, to close out, if unless you had any other thoughts, but to close out, I wanted to ask you. So today we went on a little adventure. We yeah. went to Dinosaur Ridge yeah. over in Morrison. Um, Tori revealed in my last gaming channel video that we're in the Denver area. So I guess I can just openly talk about that now. I'm not going to give out my address, <laughs> but. Um, Anything you want to mention about that? We did a walking tour. Uh, apparently, this is the area where the Stegosaurus was first found, uh, and there's a lot of dinosaur tracks there, and it's where there was a, a bed of water, and so dinosaurs would walk along it, but then the Rocky Mountains were formed after, so now it's it got like pushed up, so the tracks are on this uh, yeah. almost vertical, not shale, but these rock formations. If your buddy Dave were here, he would be like, oh, but it was this kind of, Josh, you kind of <laughs> It dumb. was <a> polymorphic. <laughs> he would correct everything I'm saying. Um, but any, anything you want to mention about that little adventure? I thought it was it was cool. Yeah, I, I, I will tell you, folks, Dinosaur Ridge, uh, what, a, what a fun afternoon. And, and, and Josh hanging out with you and your wonderful wife and Tara and me, what a great day. And um, yeah, about a mile and a half um, one-way walking tour lots of great displays um footprints in the stone mm -hmm. the one of one of 13 raptor footprints mm -hmm. there's only 13 raptor locations in the world yeah one of them's right here yeah. in our beautiful state so i highly recommend it uh, get out there uh take your family your friends and make it a, just a fun day together and get some education too yeah this episode sponsored by no um <laughs> <laughs> no and i mean we didn't even have to pay anything um yeah we great. went we went into the uh visitor center <laughs> after and they have gift stuff and you bought some like playing cards yeah. and a really cool holographic um what would you call it just a picture yeah. holographic <laughs> picture of a was it a t-rex yeah it was pretty cool yeah um that you're gonna like frame or whatever so um <laughs> so yeah i mean it's completely free they have other tours that you can go with a uh, you know a uh, a professional who who's got a, I don't know what level of education they have but they know what they're talking about yeah um, but otherwise as a walking tour you can download an app and listen to everything and so that's what my wife did so yeah, yeah uh, I think it was a fun day and uh, we got out of there just before the rain started so and you know I love that lunch afterwards <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that was Chinese <laughs> that was a lot of food man that was a great place yeah all right oh I was gonna ask you for um, before I went on to Dinosaur Ridge, um, talking about the decline and, and um, getting out of that valley, what, what do you think that people watching this can do today to help us either climb out of that or mitigate the fall so it's not as difficult? Or sure. just, just if you had one thing to, to, for advice to offer them, what, what would you say? You know, I, 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 I think in this day and age, um, to get out of that maybe that peak that may be going down, just just go back to old-fashioned values and i don't like uh being an older person who talks about old-fashioned in the sense that it was somehow better before we had our problems before but but a lot of core values like you know be go to work on time um and 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 do your best uh, give people the benefit of the doubt don't talk badly about your 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 your, your colleagues or your competitors and um and just strive to be a positive person and um and, uh, and and be known for someone of, of of good moral character yeah i think that's great, yeah. I think that's great. you know and, and and i mean that will manifest itself positively as well because i mean that's how you get promoted 
That's how you yeah. get promoted at work. Yeah. I know that you hire people, you're in charge of promotions and things like that, like I am too at work. And that's, I mean, when you have somebody who's doing all that kind of stuff, uh, you get noticed. Yeah. You know, maybe not immediately, but, but you eventually get noticed. Yeah. As long as it's a healthy place. There may be other places that, workplaces that don't notice that kind of stuff. And that might be your, your cue to find somewhere else to work. But yeah, but I yeah. think that's great advice. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I will also, uh, uh, share with that that you know I struggle with these things too, mm -hmm. you know, and so I, I I try to remind myself. Oh, I don't. Oh, there goes those sprinklers. Yep, you know, I try to remind myself. Oh, I don't need to say that about so and so. I'm just, I don't need to say that about that person. Yeah. And um, I struggle with it like everybody else. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So you're not perfect. I'm afraid not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many people out there are disappointed right now, but uh, uh, but you are a master chemist. <laughs> uh, expert, clinician, psychologist, oh. and what was the other one that we said? Physicist. Oh, don't forget mentor. And a mentor. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me on this show. And uh, everybody, thank you for sticking around for one of these longer episodes. I always like to have a longer conversation when they have somebody on here, especially Jeremy. So Jeremy and I talk a lot, and this is one of our shorter conversations. So you're all in luck that this is all you heard. <laughs> Only an hour. <laughs> well, this is terrific, Josh. I think what you're doing here is great. Oh, hey. thanks. Thanks so much, everybody. And thank you again, yeah. Josh. Cheers. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate <laughs> Cheers, it. Cheers, my friend. Clink. <laughs> thanks for listening, everybody. Stay vigilant. See you next time.